becomes a Christian. One day, while Peter was praying, he saw something strange in his mind. Peter saw a big cloth coming down from the sky, and the cloth were all kinds of animals. Some of the animals were the kind that Jewish people wouldn't eat. Then Peter heard a voice, take these animals, Peter, cook them and eat them. Oh, no, said Peter, I'm Jewish. Jewish. Jewish people say, some of those animals are unclean. We don't eat them. Don't say they are unclean, said the voice. God made them. Then the big cloth went back up to the sky, but it came back again and again. It happened three times. Just then there was a knock at the door. I have a message for Peter, said the man at the door. Would you come and visit Cornelius? Cornelius would like you to come and see him. Peter stopped to think. Cornelius was a soldier. Cornelius was not Jewish. I'm Jewish, thought Peter. I shouldn't go into the house of someone who isn't Jewish. Then Peter, then Peter remembered the big cloth. God made Cornelius, just like God made me, thought Peter. I'm not unclean, and neither is Cornelius. I think God wants me to go. Cornelius was very happy when Peter got there. Thank you for coming, he said. Please tell me about Jesus. So Peter told Cornelius and the whole family all about Jesus. Peter talked about the many ways Jesus had showed us how to live in God's way. God wants us to be kind. We should never hurt each other. The power we have is the power of love. Peter looked at Cornelius. He looked at the other people in Cornelius' family. Peter would see that the spirit of Jesus had come into their hearts. Would you like to be baptized, Peter asked. Yes, they all said. We want to be baptized. We want to try to live in God's way. Some of the other Christians were angry when they heard what Peter had done. Cornelius and his family aren't Jewish, Jewish, they said, and Cornelius is a soldier. How can they be people of the way? Peter told them about the big cloth and everything else that had happened. Then everyone understood that God's love is for everybody. They knew that Jesus came to show God's love for the whole world. Everyone can learn how to live in God's way, said Peter. Everyone can be part of the Christian church. So we're all part. We're all under God's love, aren't we? Okay. Good now, job. why was Jesus baptized? Scholars have debated this question over and over and have found no single answer. But it happened, and Jesus initiated it. Jesus came to John the Baptist in order to be baptized. The very fact that the Son of God would be baptized is startling. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith, the founder of the moment of Christianity. He was God made flesh through whom everything was made. Jesus needed no repentance. He was already perfectly righteous. John the Baptist even recognized this ironic twist. John tried to discourage Jesus and said, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? And Jesus' response, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Now, I respect people who stop along the road to help others when they have car problems. And several years ago, Kenneth and his family was driving back to Macon, Georgia from Syracuse, New York, when suddenly one of their tires blew out on their car. He was getting close to an exit, so he drove to the car and stopped it on the exit ramp in a small town in Pennsylvania. It was bitter cold and snowing, and they did not have a spare tire. So he got out of the car and decided to try to flag down a passing motorist. He was sure this was going to take some time, but to his surprise, the first car that came by stopped. They had a cell phone and allowed him to call AAA. He thought what a moment of grace this was. Within an hour or so, they were back on the road with a new tire. And now in the Christ's baptism, we are shocked by another moment of grace. 
through his baptism, Jesus was making baptism possible and effective for all humankind. The righteousness that Christ fulfilled through his baptism is the very righteousness that can stand and cover every one of us who follows Jesus in baptism. And baptism is a window through which we can see the grace of God. John saw it and those around him saw it too. Verse 16 says, Just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and a lightning on him. At this moment, Christ was demonstrating the full extent of his humility in becoming a human being. He emptied himself. And as it, Philippians chapter 2 says, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. Christ was identifying with those of us he came to save. And he was insisting that all who follow him should be identified with him through the sacrament of baptism. In this moment of self-surrender, God spoke from the heaven saying, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And while Christ's baptism does not have the same significance as our baptism, there are some common points. Both baptisms are an act of obedience through which the baptized experience God's grace and favor. It is an affirmation that is both personal and public. And both the person being baptized and the people who witness the baptism are made aware of God's grace. The difference between Jesus' baptism and our own is that Jesus had earned God's favor and we have not. It is an experience of understanding grace. In a similar sense, the family in the earlier story did nothing to deserve the person's favor who decided to stop. When they were stuck on the side of the road, he did it just, he didn't know them from Adam, but he just did it because he cared. This is the way that God's grace works. There is nothing that, that can do on our own to earn or deserve it. God just gives it to us because he cares and he loves us beyond anything we can ever understand. And there is no real life or growing apart from God's grace. As human beings, we have some basic needs. We need to be loved. We need to belong. And we need to feel as if we are important. And through the grace of a Christian baptism, God fulfills all these needs for us. Baptisms generally occur at the beginning of our spiritual lives. If we are baptized as an infant, this is a sign of what is called God's prevented grace. This is God's grace that goes before us, that surrounds us by the community of faith, that gives us roots and shows us love. This grace works within our lives, calling us, forming our spiritual lives, and bringing us to the point where we are convinced by the Holy Spirit to give our lives completely to God. Once we have accepted God's grace for ourselves and confess our faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we enter a new stage of grace. This stage of grace is called justifying grace. This is the point at which we are born again or saved and strike out on our Christian journey. 
If a person wasn't baptized as an infant, this is the point where they made their public confession of faith and are baptized in order to witness to the world the outward and visible signs of God's inward and invisible grace in their lives. Whether we are baptized as infants or as adults, God bestows His grace upon us. And holy baptism is the foremost sign of God's grace. Baptism is a privilege. A privilege which is completely undeserved. But it is a privilege that gives us evidence that we are loved by God. That we now belong to a community of faith. And that we are important. We must feel pretty important when we come to realize that God, who created this entire universe, chose to come down to earth and die so that we may live. And through the amazing grace of baptism, God provides us with acceptance, identity, and purpose. God has given us the name of Christians. And God is calling all of us to fulfill his purpose here on earth. We have all experienced the pain of not measuring up. This is the opportunity of grace. A young man named Tommy was going to a local amusement park with his family. With joy, he anticipated the little boats with the bells, the happy carousel, carousel, and the carnival games. But what Tommy really wanted to do is ride the big one, the roller coaster. He could share it with his friends, and it would prove that he was no longer a little boy. So the big day came. He rode the little boat, the cars, the carousel, he threw darts at the balloons and baseballs at the bowling pins. And all the while in the back of his mind was the thought, today I'm going to ride the big one. Finally, they got in line for the coaster, a line that appeared to never end. Eventually, they worked their way to the front, and Tommy was ready to board his dream ride. Just as he was about to step down, the gatekeeper pulled him back and over to a measuring post, explaining that he had to be a certain height. It was the regulations. Well, you guessed it. Tommy was three inches too short. He didn't measure up. But thank God that in Christ we are accepted to God because God of Mason Grace. The world might tell us that we are not good enough. We might tell ourselves that we're not good enough. And it could be true. We don't measure up. But God loves us anyway. <clears throat> and when we accept that God has, what God has done for us through Jesus Christ, God's grace shines so bright that we find that we do indeed measure up. We measure up to God. And after all, that is what really matters. Through the sacraments of baptism, we accept the acceptance of God. And there is no greater security in all of earth. After justifying grace, we enter a new stage of grace. That is called sanctifying grace. This means that now that we have been saved, it is time to get on with the journey. And as we get on with the journey, God's grace moves us toward maturity in Christian faith as we study His words, live according to His words, devote ourselves to a disciplined life of prayer, participating in worship, and the life in the community of faith. As we are being 
sanctified, we are doing the good work which God prepared in advance for us to do. And through, the, and though there are peaks and valleys, through God's grace, we continue to grow in our faith and our knowledge of God. And we come more and more like Christ. This is the Christian journey, the journey towards perfection. None of us will ever obtain perfection in this life. But as we continue to walk hand in hand with Jesus, we find ourselves being more and more transformed into the people we were created to be. And there is nothing more exciting in the entire world. In our Lord's baptism, Jesus was empowered by the Holy Spirit for his mission. And Christian baptism commissions us to be Christ's witness as we too become empowered by the Holy Spirit. We need to know that we are loved, valued, and cared for. Before we can accomplish any good things we do in life. And God gives us this love, value, and care through his amazing grace. May it grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.